Hi everyone, welcome to Mr. Carlson's lab. Never a dull moment here. This APC back UPS failed in a pretty spectacular way. Now I have a bunch of these things, all the other ones were fine, but this one here decided to, I guess it sounded like it was arc welding inside. So maybe it wanted to change from a UPS to an arc welder, I don't know. But it sounded pretty violent inside and uh, while the alarm was screaming on this thing and I'm holding this thing to shut it off, it was just making horrible noises. And at that point, I just took all the other ones out of service. I have a bunch of these. They're all the same. So something very interesting about these, I bought these things, oh, about a year, year or so ago, and they've been through a total of two power failures. So technically one power failure because this last one didn't count because that's when it failed. But it has this somewhat of a receipt-like looking thing on the side and it says quality assurance test and it says revision looks like one zero one three and there's just a whole bunch of uh, past it says passed on all these different tests and then it was signed off on the bottom here so I don't know if this was a recall or something like that uh, all the other ones that I purchased had this same thing on it and um, yeah so I don't know what this is maybe they were worked on or maybe this was a revision that was done later or maybe they just taped the revision onto it. I really don't know what's going on but I, I found this odd so I left it on the side of it. These things aren't seen so I really don't care how it looks. You know they just they're just there to do a job and uh, this one did not do its job so uh, sounded pretty violent. So am I going to reverse engineer this thing and try and fix it and maybe maybe fix their design flaw or whatever? No, I'm not going to bother with it. I'm not going to waste my time on this thing. I already have replaced these things with brand new, a different brand, uh, brand new units, put them back into service and everything is fine. Hopefully they don't do the same thing. And um, so uh, this one, we'll just tear down, take a look inside, see what failed, see if we can see any burn marks and what was arcing and sparking inside. Maybe it'll do it again. Who knows? So uh, we'll take a look inside and tear this thing down. Take a look inside this uh, APC UPS. So this is the battery door. So when I purchased this, uh, one battery clip is unhooked and it tells you that you have to attach the battery at the time. So I've taken the battery out obviously because I wouldn't leave batteries in any of these things even sitting after I heard this thing. So everything is disconnected. So what I'll do is I'll get a battery, I'll attach a battery to this thing, I'll plug it in like it was plugged in and we'll see if we can make it do anything and uh, maybe it'll make some noises again who knows what's going to happen so uh, at that point uh, we'll open the thing up and see if we can look for any burn marks all right here's the battery nice big heavy battery so they're in series so it's about uh, these are 12 volt batteries each right so i think when i read it last they're charged up pretty good it was about 27 volts or something across the both of them so let's attach the positive terminal look at this stiff wires over here let's attach this I think it was attached like this before it is and let's see, we attach the negative terminal here I have a pair of clippers here by the way just in case one of these was to latch and I couldn't Ooh, look at that nice big spark in there eh? let's see if I can get that oh, like so slipping under the heat shrink there okay it is hooked up so what I'll do is uh, plug this thing in to the uh, bench supply <laughs> all right Got my clippers right here just in case something goes wrong let's see what happens here we go that's just screaming now it's just gonna shut off for me not even shutting off look at that oh it did that time okay so it's not doing anything. Okay, so let's unplug it and see what it does. No, it's completely unplugged. Again, here we go. No, different failure point. So that's what it did. It was just sitting here screaming with a failure point and sounding like the thing was just arc welding inside now the arc welding has stopped so obviously probably burnt something up or it shut something down inside so it can't continue so uh yeah it does actually come off pretty easy which is nice so now let's disassemble this thing so it looks like it has some screws on the inside here and uh, some screws on the back so i'll get those screws out and let's take a look at the inside all right, I've removed every screw I can see on this. Uh, 
Well, I can see something inside. I see some circuitry. Well, that is glued together. I don't know what's going on here. Looks like it might be clipped together. I'm not really quite sure. It uh, seems like it wants to come apart here. I can't see any other screws. So it's uh, probably just snapped together. I don't know if they've plastic welded anything here at all. It feels like it's pretty solid. Let's take a look inside, see what they've done in there. So I'll get a flashlight. I do have a flashlight close to me. What are the odds? So you can see inside there. What is it? Yeah, the whole thing is just clipped together. So I'm not seeing any burn marks in here yet. You can see down in there. Not any burn marks in there yet, so. All right, I'll wrestle with the case here for a few more moments. I'll spare you from that and uh, see if I can get the actual case apart. Well, that wasn't so incredibly bad to get apart. There's a, a bunch of screws hiding under the face of the unit, so there's a little area at the bottom right down here that you can basically pull this off. And the whole face comes off and there's some screws hiding in there. Other than that, it just kind of snaps together. So yeah, nice transformer in this thing. So nice little inverter supply going on in here. And I can't see any type of burning inside. So maybe it's on the back side of the board. So in order to get this out, it looks like there is a bunch of screws. There's a screw up in the corner up here. So let's see if there is any, any burning on the back side here. So if there's one there, there's probably one at the other end of the board here, isn't there? There is. All right, is that about it? Let's see if it'll let go of the board. Boy, that's in there. Wow. Move some of the wiring out of the way. There is another screw. I see another screw right here. Still feels like it's a bit solid. Oh, maybe not. Oh, yeah. I think there's one here. They fastened this top one up here as well. There it is. Doesn't look like any arcing on there. Wow, for something that sounded so incredibly violent, it's doing a very good job of hiding it. I wonder where that nasty sound is coming from. Couldn't be this. Transformer wasn't arcing inside or something. Wow. All right. Well, I'll look around carefully here and I'll be back when I find burn marks. I cannot find any burning on this board whatsoever. And it was such a violent arcing noise. It has to be this thing. It has to be arcing windings inside this thing. It does have a little bit of an odd smell to it. And, you know, there is a little bit of, I don't know if you can see that, a little bit of discoloring up here. So I don't know if that is it. But if it is arcing, see, it is a little bit brown there. I don't know if you can see that under there. So it might be actually inside this transformer. It may have been arcing inside here. And of course, if that would just cause failure, period. All right, so I've got the transformer unhooked now. Very simple, it just unclips and then you do these two screws at the top of these two sinks here. So I have this on continuity because this is gonna be all low ohms anyways. I'll put this in here. And just before we go about doing any type of a leakage test, we'll just test for continuity. No problems there. Let's go to this one here. Interesting. Okay. 
let's see. Grab my flashlight here again. Let's see. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Well, it looks like there's an open connection here in the transformer because that's definitely doing that. So let's open this up and see what we find inside. Let's see what we can see inside here. see anything at all. Get that out of the way. Stuck to paper. And we can get rid of the paper here. Let's see what happens. That definitely doesn't feel like any type of connection. Alright, let's see. Yeah, that's definitely was making the uh, arcing and sparking there. It's pretty dark. So the transformer failed. What an odd thing to fail. I mean, this is the most robust piece out of anything, right? Let's... Hmm. Well, we can see that. Looks like it just disconnected from that. That's all. So technically this is still salvageable, but it does look like it uh, disconnected. I'm going to go take a look at that under the microscope and uh, see if this is actually leading in or if this is what's going on with this here. I'll be right back. Well, you can definitely see the failure point is that wire. You can see the burn mark on the paper here and there's two windings here and the windings are very soft. Like these windings are so soft for a piece of copper that's unheard of and it makes me wonder is that even copper and if so like i mean what else would it be aluminum windings but if it was aluminum that's a solar connection obviously that didn't take right you can actually see where it's burnt up in there right so is this actually aluminum no couldn't be. Okay, I managed to pull a little bit of the wiring out of the transformer here. You can see I've cut a little piece off here. I'll cut another little piece off here. That's not looking like copper inside, is it? I think these are aluminum. They tried to solder to aluminum windings. All right, definitely soldering iron time now. Let's see if this thing takes solder at all. All right. What a surprise. Let's try this again. You know, at least make the attempt to crimp it or something. So you can see I'm touching, touching it completely. Oof, that stinks. Wow. Amazing. Yeah, I thought that felt too soft to be copper. That just, if this is so, this almost feels like solder itself. It's that pliable, right? Because it's just soft aluminum. Wow. I'll go grab a piece of copper for comparison and I'll show you.
So here's a piece of copper. The gauge isn't exactly the same, but you can see a piece of copper for comparison, for color comparison. Makes me wonder about the other connection here. How did that hold up? Let's see. Let's back this out so you can see what's going on. The glue that holds these wires is better than uh, the actual connections themselves. Okay, so here's another one. Okay, so look at this. <laughs> oh, man. So they have a piece of soldered wire that they folded and pinched over top of the uh, aluminum. Let's open up the mechanical crimp and find out what's going on. Open this up, just like so. Of course, you know, that's what it is right there. Yeah, so you can see how it's just, you can see here how it's just, they've wrapped the solder over top of the wire. See that there? It's just pressed in there. Well, anyways, we know the failure point in this thing. So it looks like a really nice looking transformer, but uh, what's inside is something quite a bit different. So that's the failure point. That's what was sounding so nasty as it was arcing out in there buzzing and sparking inside the transformer. The transformer went away. If you're enjoying my videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell symbol if you want to be notified as soon as I post a brand new video. There'll be lots of teardowns and restorations. There'll be lots of repairs and circuitry design, all sorts of great stuff on this channel. The next episode involving this RCA CR88 communications receiver is just about ready as well. So just another reason to subscribe and tap the bell so that you're notified. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way and gaining access to many of my personal electronic inventions and designs, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab and I'll pin the link at the top of the comment section. So if you click on the link, it'll take you right there. There's over 150 videos up there right now with lots of projects that you can take part in and just learn all about electronics, old and new together. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.